Shabbat Shalom. So why did I invite our guests to speak today to share about the need for foster care families? As some of you know, I strongly advocate for people who are unseen and marginalized in society. I have been in the profession of supporting individuals with his disabilities and other barriers for over 25 years. When I met Sheila a few months ago in a newly formed steering committee with several agencies, she presented the dire need for foster care families in Wake County. She told us that many families who once fostered children didn't return to the system due to the pandemic. Children slept in the Wake County Human Services Building where there are no shower facilities or proper beds. They have nowhere to go, no one to tuck them in at night, no one to share the highs and lows of their day. It touched me so deeply in my soul. As Sheila was telling us how many children need a home, my brain started whirling with how can I help and what can I do? How can I bring resources and maybe families to foster these beautiful, often unseen children? Voila, I can invite her to share advocating for children at Beth Meyer Synagogue. I asked Sheila right then, would you like to come to Beth Meyer to share your passion, your calling for getting children who need homes into homes? And of course she said yes. Anywhere I can get the word out, I am there. Sheila brought Kim onto this mission to share with us today. I am honored to have them here with us this Shabbat morning. I encourage all of us to continue to find ways to work together in the greater community. One idea that I have is for a, our B Mitzvah students to collect items uh, that are greatly needed for children of foster care. We currently have two bins in the lobby that we're taking donations. Um, if you go online, you can see the list of donations. I'll have that bin out in the lobby through the rest of the week until Friday, and then I'll deliver them. Uh, a little bit about our speakers. Sheila uh, has uh, a lot of background in social services. She uh, is currently at Wake County Human Services in the Child Welfare Permanency Planning Services as a training and licensing programming supervisor. She is a certified trainer in trauma-informed partnering for safety and permanence. Uh, model, approach to partnerships and parenting and caring for our own. Sheila's commitment in the human services profession for over 30 years is due to her passion for helping others and to her belief that she was called into this profession to serve. Kim's first experience with foster care was within her own home as her parents provided kinship for foster care services. Kim is also nationally certified trainer in trauma-informed partnering, partnering for safety and permanence model approach to partnerships and parenting, fostering and adopting the child who has been sexually abused and becoming a therapeutic foster parent caring for your own and a rostered facilitator for the resource parent curriculum as provided by the National Child Traumatic Stress Network. Network. Kim is passionate about her work and is dedicated to serving the children of, and families of Wake County. And now I turn it over to Kim and Sheila. Good morning to you all. First of all, I want to say thank you, Sandy, for, um, for calling me, contacting me, and saying, hey, what can we do to help? And that is what we always want to hear is that question, what can we do to help and to make a difference? I wanna thank my colleague Kim for being here also today. Um, when Sandy and I met, we met at a small church. Um, it was just a small group of professionals coming together at lunchtime just to have a simple conversation about resources for families in need. And I want to say um, on behalf of Wake County Human Services and our foster care program, we want to express our gratitude for you opening up your service today to give us this opportunity to share the message for the children who oftentimes do not have a voice. Um, so, and their families, their birth families also are unseen. 
and do not have a voice. And so Kim and I are here today to be the voice for the voiceless. So we thank you for opening your hearts and your ears just to take the time to hear our message today. Um, we do believe that although most of the work falls on the shoulders of human services and social services, that the children in foster care don't just belong to us, they belong to all of us. They belong to the community. And so that is why we are so fortunate that you have expressed an interest in partnering with us to consider the needs of the children in foster care and what you might be able to do along with us to make a difference. So one of the questions we often hear is, well, who's in foster care? We have on any given day around 500 children in foster care. That number has decreased over the last few years. Um, a few years ago, we had almost 900 children in foster care. But because of the partnerships that we have created in the community, we now have approximately 500 children in foster care. The concern is, with that number, we only have 100 foster homes to care for these children. So oftentimes, because we don't have enough homes, children have to leave Wake County, sometimes even North Carolina, to have a home. We believe with, that with over one million people in Wake County, we can make a difference. We can do something about that if we come together. So who's in foster care? One of the biggest things that we hear is Sheila Kim. Do you have a beautiful bouncing baby for me? Because we know kids are, babies are cuddly and they don't talk back and most people want a baby. And we do have babies, so we do want to share with you that we have 126 children who are in the category of birth to age three. However, we do have children who are older. So in age group four to 12, we have 179 children who need a home. Age 13 to 17, we have 137. And we even have a category considered as expanded foster care. Age 18 to 21, we have 53 youth in care. So some children do come into care at a young age and because they get bounced around from home to home, traumatized and re-traumatized, they age out at age 18 and they have nowhere to go. So then they have an opportunity to remain in foster care through age 21. Because let's think about it. How many of us were ready to go out into the world without a loving family and support at age 21? Raise your hands. I wasn't. You probably weren't either. We also, we heard earlier today comments around hatred, around um, us all needing to love and um, include, instead of being exclusive, to love and embrace everyone. Um, we have a need for diversity in our families. 50% of our youth in care are African American and approximately 36% are Caucasian. So we're always in need of diversity for inclusion across all demographics. So we're so happy to be here today to spread the message of love and inclusion. Sibling groups is another huge area that we struggle around. 118 sibling groups are represented in the 500 children um, that we have in foster care. That represents 310 children that come in who are a part of either a duo or a sibling set or group of maybe three, four. We've had even up to nine or 10 in a sibling group. So if you think about your own family and your own upbringing, what would it be like if someone came to you and said, not only do you have to leave mom and dad, but we're gonna separate you from your siblings. We're gonna move you over to one home and they're gonna get to go to another home. Sometimes the only stabilizing force that they have after they've been removed from their birth parents is being connected to their siblings. So we really encourage foster families who oftentimes say, I'll take one. But what if that cute little two-year-old comes with a nine-year-old sibling? 
Will you open your heart and consider taking both of them? We also think one of the greatest gifts that you can offer is the gift of what we call shared parenting. Many of you may know it as co-parenting. Well, when kids come into care, we not only rally around the children, we have to love on their parents. And let's face it, that's not easy because sometimes they've done some things that are not so nice. But we represent grace, compassion, empathy, understanding, and love. And we must build an alliance not only around the children in care, but around their families as well. And we believe that we understand everyone is not called to foster, but everyone is called to do something. And even if you can, can put a circle of support around someone who is called to foster, that, that may be your way of making a difference. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Kim. She's gonna share some more specific information about becoming a foster parent. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. I, I just enjoyed watching uh, Sheila present. She does it with such grace. I love it. So after hearing um, the stats and the numbers and some of the needs that are within Wake County, hopefully that's opened up some of your hearts and minds to want to foster. So if you are interested in fostering, there are a few steps to getting started. Um, we host informational meetings on the second Tuesday of every month, um, downtown Swinburne Street. Um, and you can also look on our website too. You know, have um, the address and information. They start at 6:30, um, and we like to go over like the whole process, a little more detail with everybody. Um, so after you attend the informational meetings, we know that one of the um, primary things that we want to ensure is safety for our children. So we go through and we do background checks. There's a there's a list of background checks um, that we do. And once approved, we'll come out to the home and do a preliminary home visit. And what that looks like is we just want to make sure there's enough space in the home for a child to sleep, a um, place for them to eat, a place for them to play, a place for them to, uh, you know, watch TV, read, et cetera, have some fun. Um, and from there, we'll go on, and there's a 30-hour, um, I know when Sandy was presenting, she was talking about the trauma-informed parenting curriculum. So that is a uh, nationally recognized 30-hour training that's provided all across the U.S. Um, to foster families. Um, we provide that at Swinburne as well. And through that training, you're going to learn what to, what to expect when you're fostering. Um, fostering our children or children that are in foster care who have experienced trauma might be a little bit different from maybe the children that you've raised, right, if you've been able to keep them safe. Um, and so we go through um, in that 30-hour training how you're going to be able to create a safe home for them, um, how you're going to meet their well-being needs. Well-being needs are going to be uh, things such as medical, their educational needs. It might be something as simple as just advocating and let their, uh, their doctor know, hey, this child may be a little more scared today the, um, because they've experienced some things, they've experienced some trauma. And you might just be educating or the, or the educational staff and letting them know, hey, they had a visit this week. They came into foster care, they were placed in my home, so this week might be a little bit hard for this child. Um, and through the process, also you're gonna learn about a lot of the supports because while you'll be opening up your heart and your home for this child and uh, maintaining a relationship with the birth family, um, there, there are a lot of other moving parts to it, and, we, and there's a lot of resources for families as well, such as if you're working, we're the, we provide daycare for that child. Um, they do receive health insurance. Um, so those things that could possibly be burdens on a family, we try and take care of those so that your main focus can be the safety and well-being of that child and supporting the birth family as well. Um, and maybe you say, okay, fostering, this, I'd really like to, but right now is not the right time for me, or I have a lot going on in my life. Um, as Sheila was saying, there are many other ways that you could support uh, foster care as well. Um, our children will visit with their birth families at least one hour once a week, and we know that doesn't, it doesn't sound like a lot. It could be a lot more. In some families, they do have more visitation. Um, but we know days like that are hard. You know, it, it, most of you would probably leave work, have to get the child, get them to the building, we have the visit. Um, and before you go on with your evening. So after that, we, you could maybe find resources that would help you with providing foods. We have meal trains or a process of um, having a, a meal train rather. Um, networking with other foster parents because we know it takes a village. And once you go through the train and we always talk about, you know, there, yes, there are some stressors and there are some challenges. But if you reach out to someone who hasn't been or is not connected with the foster care program, they may ask you, 
oh, Lord, tell you, we knew that was going to be stressful. But if you reach out to another foster parent, they're going to remind you, yes, it is stressful, but the real reason why you stepped up and opened your heart and opened your home. Um, and lastly, if you uh, maybe that maybe that's not something you're interested in either. But you could also the bins that Sandy was talking about. You could feel free to give or check on our website too for um, other needs that our children may have. And I thank you all for um, letting us come and speak today about something that means a, a lot to both Sheila and I. Mm. Thank you thank so you. much. Thank you so much.